Hello everyone, today we're going to be talking about the introduction of effects of inertia on car collisions. Uh, so it's a real brief uh, little video, so let's check it out. So thinking about inertia, the first law of, of motion, the law of inertia, we're discussing this in the case of collisions. So think about, uh, you know, uh, whether you're riding on a bus or riding on a skateboard or, you know, riding on a bike. Um, we, whenever we are brought to an abrupt halt, typically the vehicle gets brought to an abrupt halt. So for example, if you're riding your bike home from school and you hit a deep rut in the, in the road, your front wheel will dip suddenly and then the bike will come to an abrupt halt and you'll be, but you, the rider, will be sent forward over your handlebars. This is not because the bike is exerting force on you, it is because the bike is not exerting force on you. Remember that you can only change velocities if a force is applied. So your body continues to move at the velocity it was moving until something can apply a force to it. In this case, that something would be the uh, would be say a tree that you're going to fly into, or the or the the ground. But when you are riding on top of that bike or on top of that skateboard, you have no forces applying on you. So your you know, I like skateboards because I can draw them, and I believe I've drawn this almost before. But if you hit a rock, the rock applies the force to the skateboard, but you have no force, so you continue to move. You continue to go, ah, until you can hit an object that can stop you. In this case, it'll probably be the, the ground applying a force to stop your motion. You're going to hit the ground, and it's going to apply a force to you. And you might even have things like your bones that continue trying to move. And as they continue to try to move against the, the, the rock, they break. And that's how you break your bones while you're flat, when you uh, hit a thing. So uh, inertia is the tendency of an object to resist change. Your body does not want to stop moving. It is happy to be moving. And if no forces are acting on it, it will continue to, to move as the bike stops moving. So if an object's at rest, it tends to remain at rest. Likewise, objects moving at constant velocity tend to continue to move at that velocity. So have you ever ridden on the bus and that has to stop abruptly? Uh, what is the first thing that happens? You can look up tons of videos on YouTube of buses that stop and the people go flying. As the vehicle screeches to a halt, you may have felt your body being pulled away from your seat and towards the front of the car. So even though the front of the car is stopping quickly, you continue to move forward and this is not because of a new force on you that's really the key is there's no new forces acting on you there's a new force acting on the car if you were wearing your seat belt you probably felt a dig into your chest keeping you from flying forward although the vehicle came to a stop your body kept moving forward the inertia of your body resisted the change of motion so this is uh yeah Okay, so uh, let's put the person in a, in a chair and they've got their seatbelt on. The, the idea of the seatbelt is that your body, will, your body is going to continue to move forward, but the seatbelt actually acts in the reverse direction to stop your body from moving. And so your body is trying to move forward. It is trying to have a velocity. It's trying to go this way, but your... Uh, your seatbelt will provide a, an acceleration in the opposite direction or a force in the opposite direction. Your body does have a velocity that is constant, but to change that velocity, you need to apply a force. If you want, you can grab this is an experiment you can do if you want to take a little car ride or a bus ride, grab, grab a marble and put it in a box that, with a lid that you can see through and then put it on the seat beside you in the car, or ideally you hold onto it and someone else drives. And as the car speeds up and slows down, you can watch the marble. And as your car slows down, you'll see that the marble will move to the front of the box. As the car speeds up, the marble should actually move to the back of the box. Here's another idea about that. So let's put the marble box here. And when the marble is 
when the marble rolls to the back of the, of the box, that's because the box has a force being applied to it from being on the car seat. And this is gonna be my car seat, which is not really gonna look like a car seat, but here we go. Uh, there, there's the car seat. So the, ball, the marble moves to the back of the box, right? And that's because the, the, uh, the car is applying a force forward to the box, but not to the marble directly. So the ball, the, it moves backwards. If we take the same image and we draw the draw it stopping, then when the car stops, the car has got a negative acceleration. So this is stopping, and this is accelerating. And so the marble will move, I'm gonna make the marble black, will move forward to the front of the box because the box is, is stopping, but the marble is not. And so the box, it'll be at the back of the box. So let's think about a car collision now. You are a passenger in a car traveling south at 45 kilometers per hour. Another car darts out in the, into the intersection and you do not have enough time to stop. When the cars collide, you are still traveling with momentum of the mo moving car. Unless you are wearing your seatbelt, you will move forward in the car at a speed of 45 kilometers per hour until you collide with the dashboard which will cause you to stop. Alternatively, you may be thrown from the car through the window at the same speed the car was traveling before the collision occurred. Thus, in every accident on the road, there are actually two collisions. There's the collision that where the car collides, causing the change in direction or the stop of the car. The car, right? And then there's the passenger collision, the second collision, second collision. Where does the passenger go? What causes them to stop? So this is where the second collision. The second collision is where, you know, older cars with lots of hard uh, surfaces on the inside were very dangerous in a collision. The car itself might not be damaged much because the outside of the car was very, uh, was made of hard material, but the passengers inside the car would be bounced around against the hard interior. One of the things that changed in car design in the, in the recent years is, the, is what's known as a crumple zone. So a crumple zone on a car is a section of the car that, that specifically collapses under a collision. These crumple zones slow the, the deceleration of the car down. This, this decreases the force acting on the car and this therefore decreases the amount of force acting on the individuals in the, inside the car and increases the amount of contact the person has with the inside of the car. We know the distance a passenger is thrown from a moving car is proportional in some way to the velocity of the car before the collision. Simply put, this means the faster the car is traveling, the farther a passenger may be thrown in the case of a car collision. We can determine the distance a thrown passenger will travel in this type of scenario if we know the velocity of the vehicle before the collision and the interval of time the, pass the passenger travels through the air. So this is a type of calculation in lab that we can do and possibly we'll ha we will do uh, at least uh, digitally somehow um, later in this unit. And I think with that, we're going to make a break here and we'll come back with another video about Newton's third law.